Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation. Today we are going to be discussing the BlackBerry mobile operating system. And this presentation was created by myself, Amber, my partner, Brian, the other partner, Christian, and our final partner, Caleb. So here we have a brief outline of what we're going to be presenting today. We're going to start by giving a little introduction of the operating system. Then we're going to cover some history and we're going to look at the transition the mobile operating system took. Next, we're going to look at the structure and the architecture of the system. Then we're going to compare it to other operating systems. Then we're going to look at the market share value of the BlackBerry OS. And finally, we're going to discuss why BlackBerry was popular and why they're gone now. BlackBerry OS is a pro proprietary mobile operating system created by the Canadian-based company BlackBerry Limited. BlackBerry was founded in 1984, originally as Research in Motion, by its creators Mike Lazardius and Douglas Frenai. And currently, BlackBerry has operations in 30 countries. And according to the BlackBerry official website, it states that BlackBerry provides enterprises and governments with the software and services they need to secure the Internet of Things. Here we're going to talk about the history. BlackBerry had its first release on January 19th, 1999. It was the BlackBerry 850 pictured on the left. The BlackBerry 850 was a wireless two-way pager. It was pretty revolutionary in its time because it was one of the first pagers capable of connecting to someone's work email so they could reach their contacts. It was also one of the first devices to support the BlackBerry OS operating system. The most recent products was the BlackBerry Key 2 LE which this one was interesting. It was released in 2018 and it actually runs the Android 8.1 Oreo operating system. It doesn't run BlackBerry. So that one's cool. Here we have a little bit more history. In 2014, BlackBerry received three Red Dot Awards. This is an international award that is given to products for their design or their design concepts. And BlackBerry earned three for the Q10, the Q5, and then the Z30 smartphones. The next year wasn't as great. They only received one Red Dot Award and it was for the BlackBerry Passport. And then in 2016, the BlackBerry CEO announced that they were no longer gonna make their own devices, that they were gonna partner with TCL Electronics and that TCL would be in charge of creating the hardware while BlackBerry would solely focus on creating the software. So here is the BlackBerry OS mobile operating system. It said that BlackBerry, we already said it, it debuted on the BlackBerry 850, the pager, but it was also for other simpler devices such as the BlackBerry Curve and the BlackBerry Pearl. It reached, for about 15 years, they updated the system and the latest version it reached was the version 7.1. It was a Java virtual machine kernel type but it actually was discontinued in 2013, although they did say they would still offer support for the system, but they were no longer going to update it. Here we have the BlackBerry 10 operating system. This was introduced after the BlackBerry OS burned out. BlackBerry 10 is based on QNX, which is a Unix-like operating system that was originally developed by QNX software systems until the company was bought out by BlackBerry in April of 2010. The most recent version of this is the 10.3.3, etc. <laughs> They're still currently updating it, even though this one was last updated in 2018. And this one is more of a modern operating system. It's on phones such as the BlackBerry, Blackberry Passport, Leap, and the Z10 which this one is different from the last OS because this one has a real-time kernel, whereas the last one was the Java virtual machine. Now diving into the structure of the BlackBerry OS. Um, BlackBerry OS is a proprietary mobile OS using Java-based third-party application framework, which implements the J2ME mobile information device profile and the connected limited device configuration. Um, it also uses ARM, which is an architecture component, uh, which is later discussed in the next slide in architecture. But it, allow, uh, it allowed the designer to make decisions between performance versus latency, 
allowing the instructions that would normally run to completion to be made interruptible where low latency is a priority. This was useful for mobile devices running an embedded system, which requires low latency to perform adequately. Um, BlackBerry OS also supports multitasking, allowing it to run more than one application at a time. These applications run in the background while carrying out current tasks. However, the more applications that are running, the more memory is used. Another drawback is that its device memory cannot be allocated to supplement allocation memory. Now diving into the BlackBerry OS architecture, um, BlackBerry OS is a Java-based kernel. It uh, utilizes ARM architecture and Intel X, X scale processor. Um, ARM is a reduced instruction set computer, a RISC type instruction set architecture, and it uses 16 by 32 bit uh, registers. Uh, one processor status register and a load store architecture. Uh, the Intel X scale processor utilizes an open source bootstrap firmware called Red Boot. Uh, this was designed for embedded systems. And over here, we can see the ARM uh, version 5 TE instruction set used for this architecture. Now diving into the memory, uh, the memory is divided into three sections. We have application memory, device memory, and memory card. Application memory has 128 millibytes. It is a dedicated memory space for application storage and overhead. Uh, the device memory is about 850 millibytes used for storing files and other media. And the memory card is optional, uh, just used for file storage and other applications. Uh, memory, the memory cannot be allocated to supplement application memory. Uh, this is an inconvenience as application memory handles all the overhead for running apps. If the device also has a memory card storage, this makes the device memory kind of redundant. The memory manager does not release memory after applications are closed, which can lead to a considerable slowdown of the device over time or prolonged use. Now, finally, uh, the Black OS architecture uses the BlackBerry Enterprise Solution uh, servers, which allows the mobile users to uh, wirelessly access their organization emails and other business critical applications uh, safely and securely. This solution architecture is comprised of six vital elements. We have the BlackBerry Enterprise Server, their mobile data system, uh, the BlackBerry smartphone, phones, uh, BlackBerry Connect software, uh, their alliance program, and their solution services. Uh, the Enterprise Server, along with Enterprise Messaging and Collaboration Systems, provides email access to mobile users, Enterprise Instant Messaging, and Personal Information Management tools. However, poorly configured firewalls can increase the risk of attacks. Uh, the web database and application server uh, contain several vulnerabilities of this. Uh, if the attacker detects these vulnerabilities, then he or she can easily carry out an attack and take control over the entire server. Uh, since BlackBerry OS relies on these services to provide access to organization emails and other business critical applications, this kind of vulner vulnerability affects the device and operating system as a whole. Such, vulner such vulnerabilities could lead to users to download malicious software on their devices and so forth. Next up, we're gonna talk about the structure of the BlackBerry 10 operating system, which does differ quite a little bit from the BlackBerry OS uh, software structure. BlackBerry 10 structure is set up by Qnix, which we've already talked about. It's a Unix-like system structure that embellishes on the microkernel structure. It runs the operating system in a number of uh, small tasks, so the microkernel. And this is really good because if one task goes down, the other components of the system and the kernel itself won't be shut down with it. So actually what's going to happen is that the task ending will have a minimal impact on the whole thing. And that one, uh, that one space that isn't working, it will actually just shut down and nothing else will shut down with it. And this allows you to add new hardware um, to it. And then it also has a self-monitoring monitoring manager and is safety certified. And then resources are available when needed and tasks will complete when expected. And critical processes will have the CPU time that they need necessary to accomplish the task to, that needs to get done. And the user can actually configure the system's requirements so that additional power can be drawn from unused cycles to those necessary cycles. 
And then lastly, it implements safety protocols needed to help uh, guard the system. So it'll secure logging of system activities, the heap, the stack, and then also have memory protection. And now we're gonna talk about the architecture of BlackBerry 10 a little bit. Uh, as stated in the structure, its central essential asset is the QNX Neutrino RTOS. And then this microkernel supports threads, message passing, signals, timers, clocks, and interrupt handlers. Since the OS is built upon the calls, it's built for the message passing. And then inter-process communication is very important for this architecture. Message passing is the primary form of communication for BlackBerry 10. Other forms are possible as well, but message passing again is the primary source. And then since it allows uh, message passing and signals, which occur in the kernel, shared memory, which occurs in the process manager and pipes, and then FIFOs, which are implemented in the external processes. And then message passing is used to create a robust IPC that is simplified, but it's still efficient. And then the process manager is paired with QNIX in one module. This module is necessary for all runtime systems. It is used for process management, memory management, and path name management. Process management is concerned with the creation, destruction, and process attributes or the processes. And then memory management deals with memory protection, shared libraries, and then the inner processes. And path name management deals with the path name space. And then users can actually access all of these with the kernel calls. And then lastly, the file management system executes outside of the kernel by communicating with the POSIX API, so POSIX API. This means that the file systems can be started and stopped dynamically, file systems can run simultaneously, and apps have a unified uh, path name and interface, and a file on one node is accessible from any other node. As long as the file system has been registered with the process manager, you can locate it and access it. And then whenever we actually compare BlackBerry's operating system with other popular ones, so we can say iOS, Android, Windows, BlackBerry is not doing so well. Um, since it did update its OS to BlackBerry 10 in 2013, it hasn't done the best, especially since we have learned that it later switched to Android to be more competitive. However, for the sake of argument, we will use the BlackBerry OS against iOS and Android. And then we'll first talk about security. So the big thing with BlackBerry is that it was built for business, it was built for IT. So security was a prime point in all of this. The company realized it had to rely on security to protect those that bought its product. So its entire business plan revolved around making these phones as safe as possible. Among the other top mobile operating systems, iOS would rank next in security because only apps approved by Apple can be run, then Android because it's open platform. And then when comparing the IT experience, BlackBerry also rises to the top. BlackBerry offers a lot of control for anyone who works in the tech field, so it helps out in that area. According to CBR Online, the satisfaction level that BlackBerry had with IT workers was 61%. However, that does not translate to the average consumer. For regular users, BlackBerry clocked a 44% satisfaction rate, and that's just because the interface doesn't live up to its competitors. BlackBerry still makes use of the QWERTY keyboard rather than having a full touch screen that people can use, and then that's what makes Android and Apple just so beyond what BlackBerry has because they've adapted. This goes along with applications as well. BlackBerry OS was known for security, which doesn't involve a lot of outside developer interaction. Since users didn't get the apps they wanted or needed, BlackBerry fell to the wayside, not even swapping to Android and the Android uh, app market could revive their sales. As stated, iOS and Android dominate the consumer market. BlackBerry was on top for a long time because of its innovations in dealing with business applications. However, its business model didn't intend on consumers wanting more powerful phones. When it comes to interface choice and applications, iOS and Android reign supreme. iOS specifically has marketed its ease of use for all of its phones. However, it only produces the iPhone, whereas Android has multiple different phone lines to offer with different specifications for each device. Both iOS and Android also have extensive application libraries so that people can extend their own experience on their mobile device. BlackBerry dominates security, but cannot quite keep up in other aspects. 
According to Reader's Choice Awards 2013, BlackBerry OS, before swapping to BlackBerry 10, had the lowest satisfaction rate of the tested mobile operating systems. Okay, as you can see, um, uh, in the early 2000s, uh, BlackBerry was doing too well as, as in the uh, dark gray area. Uh, but as it got to around like 2012, they started dwindling out and not even significant enough to you know, stand out. They became more of this orange category up here. Um, the next one. Uh, so why they were popular. So they became really popular in America because uh, they had really good email and business integration, had several multitasking features. They supported uh, WAP, which is like an early version of HTML. Um, they had a lot of tactical functionality, like the trackball lets you use like a mouse and or uh, and a touch screen, um, as well as the trackpad. You know, not a lot of phones had like the keyboard, and so. Um, they're, they're gone mostly because, like, like they said earlier, uh, they focused a lot on for like working for businesses and uh, not really for consumer products. And then uh, Apple devices like uh, the iPhone or Android devices came along and it really blew up in the consumer market. And from there, it uh, only took over the business market. Um, so, I mean, the apps well, just didn't keep up and they didn't really upgrade at the same pace. They had the advantage, uh, in the beginning, but since they didn't, you know, go with the flow, uh, they really kind of dived down. Uh, here we have a list of the references we use in case anybody wanted to go find some additional information on their own. And there were actually a lot of references. We have two slides <laughs> full. So this is our second page in case you wanted any more additional information. But that is really all we have to offer you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us or comment on the video. 